well switched me on there. Oh, uh, I've got no light. What's going on here? I can see you now. I couldn't see you last time because I was looking uh, at myself. What's happening? I did send you a couple of emails. I, don't, I didn't send them very I have. Ago. I have the Amsterdam. Okay, welcome to part two of Bases 145. We're with Nat, Natalie Kessel. Uh, or Cassell, is it? No. Uh, Eva, but Kessel. I don't regard it my I don't regard it my birth name. So I think I, I think if I called you yeah. Cassell, okay. it would you'd have to have an L E on the end there somewhere. Possibly, I've always been known as Kessel. Kessel, it's how yes. you say it. That's what's that's important. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what I've received from you for this part two is I've received a document, uh, a, a thing about Masons in, in Amsterdam. Yeah. And also another PDF, I think three documents. There's the email description that you sent, which I've saved as a PDF. And um, there's the uh, another document, a book or something you've written, something, some kind of PDF. Uh, uh, yes. Um when because obviously I, I touched on what happened in 2019 in Amsterdam and the, one of the PDFs is some of the bad people I met in Amsterdam okay. um, but then I sent you I think I sent you something from the, uh, called My Life did I send that to you that I wrote in 2020 something like when that my yeah when, my neighbours broke in in the middle of the night at 1am with an ambulance service. Um, these are the same neighbours that have been breaking in and vandalising my house and stealing from me. And when they broke in in the middle of the night, I drove to London the following morning. And that's my account. of That was my perspective of my life at the time. I had amnesia. I didn't remember being kidnapped. And I didn't really remember the abuse that I suffered either. But then, because no one responded and helped me, I tried to kill myself. <laughs> and I ended up in a coma. And during that coma, I kind of had a bird's eye view of what was going on. What did was you, actually going Did you on. leave it, your body as such? Uh, yeah, I guess I did. I, I, I went, I felt love. I, I felt like I was reunited with my family. Right. Um, and but I had, it, was, it was very bizarre because I think I left my body on separate occasions because I was unconscious for three weeks. And I think I left my body in different, in different ways, if that makes any sense. Because when I well, first... Well, how was your experiences? Uh, explain your experience when you did this. Okay, well... When I first went unconscious, I was currently hanging from a three-story um, balcony. So, were you in that dream state, or were you physically hanging from it? Oh, I was physically. I went unconscious as I was hanging. So, <laughs> sorry. When you I, said hanging, I mean, were you trying to hang yourself? No, 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 no. So. I was on the third story of a of, of a balcony in Ibiza, and with the cyber attack that was going on, the police wouldn't stop it. I and I was my work was being deleted, and I wasn't sleeping. And I was I'd only just started, you know, having tro knowingly having trouble with my neighbours, and I didn't know what was going on, why it was going on. I didn't understand why I'd found myself at my age without any friends or family. It was the first time I noticed that I was alone because for many years, because I was busy with the children and I had a business and I, and I had my ex, I didn't notice that I didn't have any friends or family. And I suddenly, when I, well, after the neighbours threw me out of my house in August 2020 and I ended up in Ibiza, um, because of the cyber attack and because I wasn't sleeping, and because I didn't understand why or what or who, I tried to kill myself. So the idea was I went on the balcony and I was about to jump. But before I had the chance to jump, I slipped. And I I went I went I slipped before I had a chance to kind of dive. 
and my immediate and and I it was like I um it was like I'd been in a trance and I suddenly um came out of the trance so when I slipped kind of prematurely to my expectation of jumping I panicked and I I kind of woke up and I grabbed onto the rails to hang on for dear life and I was just shouting hair I literally started shouting help I saw I couldn't see the ground it, it was you know the ground was too far away for my eyes about my glasses to kind of like make out properly and I panicked I went to say help and then I just went unconscious midway through speaking and midway through falling and at that moment I would say I had some kind of out of body experience because I saw myself which is this is very bizarre because it doesn't make entire sense but I saw myself back in the room that I had just kind of come onto the balcony and though I heard a helicopter and I there was lots of there was lots of talking there was lots of like men like you know lots of commotion and and it, and 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 well someone that I had met not very long before was talking that, I, that he told me he was an ex-policeman but I think he might have been an actual current policeman I don't know um and uh, Parker Bray's name came up and someone shouted you shouldn't have said his name or something or don't say his name I don't know that might have been a few minutes later anyway I saw myself coming out of the room that I was staying at the Marcel Marcel apartments and I saw myself going up the stairs that were around the corner from where I was staying but stairs that I had never been up before so I I hadn't walked up those stairs when I was conscious but when I was unconscious, I saw myself going up these stairs and around the corner up onto the opposite side of the building. And then it looked like I kind of saw myself kind of go down and swing back up, if that makes any sense. Okay. And then it was a little bit blurry. And Sorry, then I saw myself. You physically swung back up? Well, uh, okay. So that wasn't quite an out of body, but it was as if. I saw myself wearing uh, someone else's dress and I saw myself, okay, so, okay, so this might not have been an actual, this was a weird experience. I, I saw myself wearing somebody else's dress and, uh, well, it, it looked like I'd got shot in the stomach. Hello, yeah. I can't I can't explain exactly, but basically where I on on during this kind of episode, I saw my stomach bleeding and I saw myself kind of going down off the balcony and then straight back up. But my stomach was bleeding and during my three week coma when I was unconscious, I was in agonizing pain where I saw the blood. And I have been left with a massive dimple where I saw the bleeding. I mean, is that because you were basically hanging off the, the railing on your stomach? Well, I don't think I don't think I actually fell all the way. I think because I was under surveillance, I think they I think they clipped some I think they clipped something onto me. I think they because it looked like I was being uh it looked like I went in an amb in an air ambulance. And I saw three men with tattoos and muscles that I'd never met before. And I saw my, at this point, I think. I mean, uh, do you think they were just the ambulance crew, the air ambulance crew or what? I don't know. I saw myself being put onto a bed. I saw myself being put onto and like an ambulance type bed. And I remember, I remember seeing these three muscular men with tattoos. So that was some kind of out of body experience, but it wasn't the very beginning of it. wasn't You know, I wasn't. I didn't see myself. I didn't see myself hanging. I just saw myself going through that room that I had been staying in and going up the stairs around the other side of the building. And I went back to that location in October twenty two. Yeah. In October 22, I went back to that location with my ex because I got back with my ex 
in February, March 21. But I'll go back to that. Um, but I went back to this location. Again, was that, he your ex then? Yes, he was my ex between OIC. So we broke up between June 2019 and we got back together kind of March, April, May 21. He moved back I mean, in bearing July. in mind we had the COVID thing in between all that. I was in Ibiza during the COVID. So my accident was in the middle of COVID and the neighbours were in my house in the middle of COVID too with the ambulance. Right. Um, yeah, most of my bad stuff that happened was actually during COVID when everyone was meant to be, you know, two metres apart. But my neighbours certainly weren't two metres apart. They were all very much together in, you know, in each other's houses and in mine. But anyway, um, when I went back to Ibiza, though, in October 22, and I walked around to the back of the car park where I'd been staying, and what I saw when I was unconscious matched what the building actually was like on the side I didn't visit when I was staying there, if that makes any sense. Right, yeah. Well, anyway, that was the be the beginning of my coma. It, it, I, it, I don't, I didn't. It doesn't look like I fell all the way to the bottom. Well, no, because, I think you had. You, you wouldn't be in the state you're in now. Three floors. Well, they told me I broke my pelvis in five places and that I'd never walk again. Um, but as soon as I was awake, I kept standing up and walking, and I kept getting shouted at. Um, and they were telling me I wasn't allowed to walk and I, you know, I had to be in a wheelchair. And I tried saying, but, you know, I can move my pelvis. And I was doing like 90 degree things with my legs because I was trying to think, why are you telling me that I can't walk when it doesn't hurt and I can move it? You know, I was like doing complete 90. Yeah. You know, I was lifting up my legs really high just to prove that there was nothing wrong with me. Um but yeah, and I'm running every day as well. And I'm also, recently I've been running quite fast. I mean, you know, as fast as I was running in my early 30s. Right. So are so, you, do, are you do, got some kind of healing property or what? Well, I don't, I don't believe I fell. I think, they, I think they took me off the railings before I fell. Um, I, and also the other thing is, no, I don't think I have great healing because my neck... Um, I click my I mean, neck. I, every... I think the point is, if if you'd fallen from one of those concrete hotels onto concrete three floors, you wouldn't be around at the moment. No, I don't believe so. Plus, um, plus there were probably well, railings at the bottom, were there? There were metal railings at the bottom, and there was concrete ground at the bottom. Yeah, there's no, I don't think that would have been a survivable event. When I was unconscious, I saw myself come back up to the top plus I went unconscious when I was midway through saying "heh," I literally was "heh," and then I went unconscious so I think they made me un I think they um you know did an a I think they made me unconscious and I said I think they took me to hospital I think I was in an underground facility for the first three to five days maybe even a week now how do you know that since you were in the coma because I, I saw nurses, I saw doctors, I saw, I saw kind of, un, it felt like it was underground rather than overground by what I saw. Uh, I think. Did, did the nurses have any, any kind of um, insignia on them? I didn't, I didn't see nurses clearly. I saw. Or whoever, I, staff. I don't, I don't even remember. All I knew, I knew I was in hospital. I could see nurses. I could see a drip. I knew I was on a drip. But what I'm saying is, are they the, the normal staff nurses that you would have in the hospital? Or were well, they different in any way? The, the, I mean, they didn't, they didn't look the same. But when I woke up and I was actually, you know, um, when I saw doctors and nurses there... It felt like I moved to two or three different places while I was unconscious. I, I, you know, when you're moving, 
it at one point it felt like I, mean, I was on were, the were train. You in a different hospital completely or did you get was any of that recorded in your notes? Well, my notes had five days missing and the notes were written in Spanish and I never tried to I never tried to uh I didn't try and uh, interpret them into English. But they weren't very honest with me, so well, for, where's this five-day gap? Well, my accident was on the 2nd of December. And the notes, they charged me, I think they charged me from the 6th of December. But the 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 doctor, the consultant doctor wrote my notes up and he said I came there on the 7th. So they charged me from the 6th, but the, the, the um, I mean, I got that actually. I could send it to you. Um, yeah. but, uh, but so, I mean, yeah, the, when did you have the accident? When, when did you do the attempt again? What's that uh, date? That was on the 2nd of December. Uh, yeah, and the note started one set. Of, they charged me from the 6th, but the doctor said I came in on the 7th. But I complained about it and I was ignored. So I, I was so I, I woke up feeling. I woke up feeling the same kind of traumatic kind of way that I did when I was first kidnapped. You know, that's how I felt. I felt, I mean, I think while I was unconscious, I, they had me kind of standing up and they had me tied up as well. While I was unconscious, they had me tied up. And when I first woke up, I kept remembering the dreams. And because I, I don't I don't know. It's like I kept waking up, but I wasn't waking up. I was just doing, I was thinking I was waking up, but I was still unconscious. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, it, to begin with, I thought I was tied up when I was awake, but ever since I've revisited my memories, what they had tied, what they tied me up with in the, in the dream was somebody's belt. It wasn't like anything to do with the hospital. So I think I was just tied up when I was unconscious. I don't think they tied me up when I was awake. But while I was unconscious, I was always trying to untie myself. That was the main part of my coma dreaming was I was trying to untie the, my arms. So it was, it was, I don't believe I was treated very well, you, you know, while I was unconscious and when I when I when I was conscious they were horrible to me as well why were they horrible to a little girl like you that's what I couldn't understand and they made me feel like I had done something really exactly like when I was a child um because when I was a child I was always being told that I was the naughtiest child in the world well that and means you're independent never, and spirited ever, so that's good no, but I never did anything. I didn't ever do anything naughty because I was too scared of the beatings and the rapes that came with it. I mean, right. and plus I wasn't a naughty minded person. No, I mean, I've used a couple of terms that are probably inappropriate, uh, uh, but the, the, the point is it's, I mean, this, this is, uh, so I'm getting a bit of a thing on the, the left of me neck here, but um, there's a, so, so what happened? Sorry, let's continue on. This on. Well, so you, um, you've you've had this three three weeks of coma. You've woken up. You've got five or six days missing, depending on what the records start with. Um, and they lied to me. They. Now what did they say? That was a lie. Well, again, it was very. They they were going out of their way to confuse me, and they were going out of their way. They, they wanted. I think they 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 were doing the the tech. They were doing the um, you know, with gang stalking and targeted individuals. They like they're trying to trigger a person and make them. They they want a targeted individual to lose their temper or to commit murder or commit a crime or they they want a targeted individual to react to what they're doing. So that would then give them the excuse that you had done this or that or whatever. Well, when I first woke up, they made out that I had been, they made out that I trashed my hotel room or my my apartment room. 
um, but they changed the story several times. They weren't consistent. So, of course, I was waking up from a three-week coma with all the kind of expected disorientation that you would expect because you've been on... I mean, I don't know if they put me on morphine or whatever they put me on for three weeks, but, you, you know, the dreaming you have when you're unconscious is very bizarre. Um, so they told me... They told me different stories. They told me I'd trashed my room... They told me I'd run into the village and I was drunk and naked and I was, you know, um, like, they made out to begin with that I had been like a, like a lout or a thug or, you know, that I'd been making trouble for myself. Um, I know Are there that, any uh, independent witnesses which would say that you were making trouble? Oh, no. that They ended up, they ended up not, they didn't... Um, I think they changed the story in the end. I don't know that they continued with that, but they were just doing lots of different stories. So I would get confused and disorientated because I remember just like looking and thinking, it just reminded me of my kidnap. It just, the, the feeling that I had, it, it, because until this happened, I didn't remember being kidnapped at all. I didn't. I, I, so I by was, doing this, you somehow, um, uh, the trauma levels were triggered to the identical trauma levels that I experienced when I was kidnapped. They and that they treated me. They treated me really badly, um, and I was. I they made me feel like I was a terrible person. I'd done terrible things. Um, I didn't, but that's what they you know made me believe while I was waking up, and it took me. It was it was over a year before I remembered what happened. Um, so, you know, I, I spent months really thinking, oh, my God, why did I do that? You know, I, I was, but I didn't react to it because I'm not. Okay, you've had this accident because I think we're spending too much time on one incident. Yes, And yes, you've got yes, a lot yes. to cover. So, yes. okay, uh, okay, so you got better. Yes, I, I'm still, uh, I mean, I've had neck problems. My neck has been in agony for like, well, 30, 35 years. Um, that's getting better, but it's much better now. But after my accident, my neck was, uh, well, that I, that I, yeah, my neck and my shoulder, I think I dislocated my shoulder during the accident. Um, and that's what I've been kind of healing from physically, even though they told me it was my pelvis. So what, what are your C1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertebrate like? That's the neck. Uh, I've got two. I've got. A, I think I've got a number two. That I've got two that have been broken at some point. Right. Uh, and I every day I'm pushing myself to get more movement. Right. Um, because I can't fully turn my neck all the way. Right. And it hurts if I'm cycling or I'm driving. I can't yet fully do this. But what well, can you do it on the other side? Both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That side's okay. But this side, I've got I've got some restriction in here. Right. So um, I did spend two years just nudging the NHS to see if they would actually treat me. I was just kind of just testing them to see if they would actually treat me, and I went round in circles. Well, sometimes and, yeah. it's better to, to leave things alone. And uh, okay, so yeah, so you've got you've given these three documents or these three accounts that you. It's not they're not documents. They're, well, they're they're you, you've made some kind of rip books or you 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 compiled these. Yes, but I mean, it's it was I gave up. Yeah, I haven't I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I just had to move on to do different things because of. Okay, could you go through me. sort of each one? And then in the edit, I can maybe put some images of that over. Okay. Um, so the, the Amsterdam one? Yeah. Start with that. A for okay. Amsterdam. Okay, that's an easy one. That's <laughs> um, So when I mentioned that I chucked my ex out in June 19, and I went to Amsterdam, I first went to Amsterdam on, well, I tried to go to Amsterdam on Monday the 10th of June 19. But my son and my, I had a new employee at this time who happened to be the same age as my son. B 
because of the state of mind I was in. I mean, if you think of a woman that's just lost of a husband of 50, 60 years, and you, you know when you see someone grieving where they're literally just crying, falling on the floor, and they just can't do anything because they're just, you, you know, so heartbroken. I've never cried so much in my life. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So I was, I was just a complete mess. I, I, so anyway, my son and the employee were meant to be taking me to the airport, but they didn't, they, they expected me to kind of look after myself and actually kind of, you know, yeah. be the adult because I was the adult and say it's time to go to the airport now. But I wasn't in a state to look after myself at that point. And because they were taking me, I, well, I, anyway, they took me to the airport at the wrong time. So I missed the flight. I just interrupted you. Sorry. No, uh, the thing is, we, we've, we've already sort of covered that you were, that you got to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. and okay. I don't want to. Okay, I don't want right. to. I don't want to overindulge in yes, yes. the minutia oh. of travel. Okay, the ninth of July, uh, two thousand nineteen, is the date that I. Um, actually, let me go back into June. Around the twentieth of June, I can't remember exactly when it was. Um, the hotel, the Park Plaza, they arranged. For Vincent Brink, I've given you his details in one of those PDFs, I think. Um, they arranged for him to come and help with my cyber attack. When my son went back to England after, oh my, because my son came to Amsterdam with me for a week. Um, and that, that was the first time he was really aggressive with me and he was, uh, yeah, quite bad. Um, but anyway, he went home and the park plans are arranged for this Vincent Brink to come and sort my computer out. Anyway, I ended up spending a weekend locked in his flat. Um, so how did you get locked in the flat? Well, because I think he did a bit of kind of um, mind. Okay, all right. Um, well, I think Vincent Brink, who is a member of the cartel, he's also a pimp in Amsterdam. And from my understanding, all pimps have uh, access and they use the mind control software. I mean, I, I don't know exactly, but I the way I liken it is between Paul McKenna and Westworld. So, yeah, anyone that has watched Westworld and obviously knows of Paul McKenna, um, and between the computer database that they do and whatever else. So Vincent Brink um, was trying to trying to suggest prostitution to me uh, mindfully. He didn't outrightly tell me in words, but he was trying to, he, I think he was trying to, to subtly coax me into the idea that, well, he was just trying to tell me that's what I was going to do actually. And, I spat a few thoughts at him because even in my grief and even in my state, I said to him very clearly in my head, <laughs> I think not, you know, I did make it very clear that blood would be drawn if, you know, that I would not comply and I would not participate. Um, and he was, a, he was, he was a proper, uh, well, he, yeah, he, he was a proper pimp. Anyway, the, the park plans are arranged for him to come and he convinced me to go back to his flat. And as soon as I was in the car with him, I realized that I'd made a mistake, but I didn't understand what I was doing. You know, it was too late. I was in his car with my suitcases. He took me back to his flat. He told me that, you know, we were going to go outside to the river and he, you know, he was all lovely to me. And as soon as we got in his flat, he acted like a kidnapper and, didn't let me go out again. Um, and that's when I refused all his, all his, all his mindful kind of insinuations of prostitution. I just let him know that that wasn't going to happen. Um, and yeah, but it wasn't a very pleasant weekend. Um, I was forced, I think lots of ketamine. Um, and when I tried saying, you know, no, thank you. He, he, 
yeah, he wouldn't take no for an answer, but I was able to, I was able to manipulate it. So it looked like I was taking more than he wanted me to. I mean, I remember kind of pushing it around and, you know, trying to pretend I was taking it and not. Um, I, I know that that night he vomited and he couldn't understand why I was just sitting there as if nothing had happened. But I did lose consciousness, I know that. And I, yeah, I believe he probably, I think he did things to me while I was unconscious, but uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, I just made it clear that I wasn't going to behave the way he needed me to for what he had in mind. And on the Friday night, he picked me up from the hotel, um, like, you know, really nice because he was going to sort the computer out. He was he, initially he was going to help me work as an accountant, you know, keep my business. Um, and he was lovely. But I knew as soon as I was in his car before we'd got back to his flat, I knew that I didn't want to be in his presence but it was too late because once we got to his flat, I wasn't, he didn't let me out again. Friday evening, we arrived there um, and he took me and he let me out again Sunday early afternoon, about one, two o'clock. Um, yeah. I, 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 I was lucky. I didn't expect, I wasn't expecting him to drive me back to the hotel. I thought I was going to get murdered instead. So I, I was, I was so relieved that he let me out. Uh, I just kind of moved on from it. And then July the 9th was when I met Ralph Hartendorp on a flight between Leeds, sorry, between Amsterdam and Leeds. Now, Ralph Hartendorp knew my movements in advance. He, he wasn't just there by chance. His business partner, uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember which one, but the, not the youngest one, the other one. His business partner was on the same flight, but they weren't sat together. Um, so I believe he was put there, you know, on purpose. And he offered me a job. You, you know, I'm, I'm in an absolute state at this point. You know, um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't in a I wasn't in a state to take on a new kind of role of a job. Um, but he I think I think you call it love bombing or something. I don't know. He was he you know, he had nice aftershave on and he, he you know, he made out he was going to he had a friend in Google, he was going to speak to his friend in Google and he was gonna help you know, send my ex to jail. And he was going, you know, he's going to give me a job in his new, in his, in his uh, cloud team company. And he was going to sort my cyber attack out. And he was going to help me find somewhere to live in Amsterdam. He was absolutely lovely. And on Thursday, the, so Monday, the, oh, actually that was the 8th, 9th, 10th. So actually it must have been Thursday the 11th. I don't know, whatever. It was either Thursday the 11th or Thursday the 12th of July. He came to my hotel when I came back because I went from Amsterdam to Leeds on the Monday and then on the Tuesday, no, no, on the Wednesday I went from Leeds to Southampton um, but I couldn't get into this house because the neighbours and my children had actually I'm, I'm really not uh, keen to go through uh, every every step of every journey uh, yes, I, yes. because, I mean, we could be here for another three hours and you still yes, won't yes. have got to Amsterdam yet. Okay, um, and what right. I want to get into is what sort of trauma or, or what what has happened okay. in terms of um, you know, yes, what, yes. No, what, I, why I, you're yes. in this situation. Okay. Um, basically, Ralph offered me a job and I had to do some training with him in Breeder. And on August the 2nd, I took I came back to England again and I got my car and I drove it back to Amsterdam. And then... I went to Breeder for the week, the 5th of August to the 9th of August. And that was my first taste of gang stalking behavior. I hadn't experienced any gang stalking behavior since I was a child in Sway. And the whole village kind of shunned me like I was a murderer. And I couldn't understand why, because I thought, you know, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know I was a targeted individual. I didn't know I was, un I didn't know I was under surveillance or anything. 
the whole village were horrible um, and Ralph's team, well, basically I spent a week being bullied by Ralph's team and the whole of the vi village of Breeder. That was horrible. There was no job. It was all, uh, they were just doing stuff, I suppose, to me. Um, Ralph just was really horrible. Um, and, and then there was more stuff that happened in Amsterdam. Of all the people I showed you, they were just doing lots of street theatre. I suppose Ralph Hartendorp and the team at the Park Plaza Amsterdam were doing street theatre. I didn't know it was street theatre at that point. I just didn't know what was going on. And there was lots of um, film crew cameras everywhere. And there was lots of kind of, lots of activity. They had lots of busloads or coachloads of people coming in by the day. Um, and the car park was overflowing. In August 19, the car park at the Park Plaza was overflowing. The other thing that happened was they had... Well, it's tourist season. You're going to get a lot of buses and things happening. Yeah, but the, the car park was overflowing with cars. In June and July, there was no one in the car park. And then in August, it was overflowing across the road. Uh, I don't know. It might not have been anything. But there was also a convoy of government officials that came into the park plaza as well so i got the impression with hindsight that they were just checking to see my knowledge of what was going on because at this point i didn't know that anything was happening to me other than my ex i didn't know that anyone was involved i, I mean, just a lot of this is focusing around your ex ah but in amsterdam it wasn't my ex in amsterdam it was everyone that i met in amsterdam was members of the cartel so, and how do you know they were the cartel? And um, which which cartel? I don't know which. I all I know is there was one person that actually. Uh, I'm just um, getting anxious that we don't want to be we don't want to be um, d defaming organisations when they actually haven't been involved. Oh, I see. No, no, no. Um, I met one person that actually made meth meth something. I don't know exactly what it was. But he, he, there was one person that had a factory down the road. There was one person that just drove the lorries. And there was one person that kind of sold it. But they were Are all... you talking about methadone or something? Is that some kind of imitation to heroin? I can't remember what it was. Methadone it? or something like that. I don't know. Meth crack or something? I don't know. I can't remember. I just know that Methyl, one of them... whatever. I No, I, I don't know what it was. Methadone. It was a... It was a white, it was like a rock. It was a white rock of some sort. I, get, I mean, what do you mean a white rock is like limestone or what? Oh, actually, no, or clear. I don't know. It was between white and clear. I, I, I can't remember what it was called. Right. I, I, okay, moving well, on. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh. And also Vincent Brink, I suppose, I, I, I think he just openly told me that he was part of a cartel organisation. Plus he just had, you know, he just had a lot of white powder. Well, that sounds um, like cocaine. No, it wasn't. Okay, it was, it was white and grey, I think. White grey? Uh, white grey or white cream. I don't know, but I don't think it was cocaine. I mean, talcum powder. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. But I just know that they were working together. I mean... I, it, I don't know. know. There, there there might be several... I haven't seen too many drug movies, but I mean, there might be s several versions of something that you do to something to disguise it slightly or whatever. I, I don't know. Um, I okay, mean, moving I, on. Okay. Um, moving on. Well, to... Okay, so the end of August, they do like a week, kind of lots of really big, uh, lots of really big weird things. You know, they were emptying the hotel so that everyone vanished. You know, the car parks were completely full, but there was no one inside the hotel. So whenever I would come out of my room and go anywhere, there wasn't a single person anywhere. And the staff were lovely. You know, for the first two months, they were they made out that they were my new family and they were going to support and help me. Yeah. Um, and, and just be lovely. 
And then for the last couple of weeks, they made up they'd never met me before and they didn't even know my name and they didn't know what room I was in. Um, and then, then they were really bizarre. And one night they put on like a buffet spread for me in the kind of, they had like a guest lounge thing that they put snacks on for the guests every day. And one night they put a spread on that was just for me, um, you know, a few foods that I liked, you know, avocado and hummus and olives and, I don't know, bread and things. But, and, a, and two bottles of red wine. And they disappeared. They just completely vanished. So I was the only person, you know, that was there. And they disappeared. And then I think it possibly was the day after that they arranged for police to escort me to a mental hospital. Oh. And uh, what happened there? Were you sectioned? Uh, well, on the day... While I, while I was under the influence of the drugs that I'd actually bought from them at the hotel, um, oh, and that's also how I know, because they had a resident cocaine dealer like that lived in the hotel. Um, yes. But, I think that's called keeping it in-house. Oh. It's a bit of a joke, that. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit slow. Well, um, you, yes. you know, the resident drug dealer, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. We, we don't want to have a any unnecessary freelancers muddying the waters and ruining the reputation of the hotel? Well, I think there was, there was guns. There was talk of guns. I think they probably shot anyone that walked on their turf. From what I heard and what I gathered from reading between the lines. So, yes. So what they, happened they were... that, so you were basically sectioned by who? Who, who, who decided, or were you sectioned? What are the uh, what are the the laws in Amsterdam which would? Oh uh, well, you they to be... made they made up a load of things. Uh, they said they yeah they made up lots of things that weren't true, and I think it was because I was disclosing to all the other guests in the hotel. I was asking if they'd seen the cocaine dealer. I think that's not a very wise thing. I know. So I got locked. So that's why they locked me up. But um, I was very high at the time they did, but obviously... Were you high I on cocaine? A, a, a mixture. A mixture um, of what? In the... I mentioned to you earlier about the liquid happiness. Well, in that same shop that sold um, what I think some kind of like adrenaline type, type drug. Yeah. But they sold six different ones. And they were... There were, there were a variety of highs and um, hallucinogenic-type drugs, and I literally just took them all. I, I took them all. I took all of them because I was just trying to numb the pain that I was feeling, and I didn't know how to deal with the pain because the pain was so strong. So I, I took a lot of drugs. And if you've seen that film, Silence of the Lambs, which I haven't actually seen, but I've seen part of a scene that I wasn't able to watch all the way because it made me feel sick. Um, but the way I equate it was bad stuff was happening and I was just smiling through it. I mean, you know, I, I was just... The drugs made me not see all of the bad. I was just... So, I, I was so, just I mean, the, th the, thing, the thing we're getting a picture of here that you're spending an awful lot of time on drugs, one type or another. Yeah, between 2015 uh, and 2020, yeah. That's what I did to numb what was going on. Um, so even when I didn't know stuff was going on, I felt it. So, yeah, I... It culminated on the night of the 2nd of December 2020, but certainly, I mean, it started in 2015, but I think, well, no, it started in 2015, but in 2019 and 2000, and, well, 2019 was probably the worst because that was when I was properly grieving and I, I didn't, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to deal with this pain. You know, and I was just noticing that I had no friends or family to yeah. comfort me. But I mean, if you were if you were on drugs all the time, the friends and family might want to distance themselves from you. 
Oh, I bought it between 2015 and 2019. It wasn't obvious. It was very, very, um, it, wa it wasn't obvious, but it got obvious in 2019. So where exactly. does uh, all these fancy names like Epstein come in and stuff like that? Okay, so um, you you've heard of the you've heard of the Playboy. Yeah. Have you heard of the Mayfair Clermont? Have you heard of the Clermont Club in Mayfair? Mayfair. Well, uh, I haven't heard of, but I'm sure that somebody has. Okay, it is documented on the internet. Have you heard of Lord Lucan? Yes. Okay. Who, well, who vanished? Yeah. Well, Lord Lucan vanished, according to the internet, through the Clermont Club. Right. Um, the Clermont Club is where I went when I was kidnapped. And the, um, Malcolm Kessel was the manager of the Clermont Club at the time I was kidnapped. Is that why you're using that in your name? No, no. He became my trafficked uncle because I was given to his brother. So that's why I use the Epstein and, and Buckingham Palace. But that's why I use Epstein because uh, not only... So Malcolm Kessel is partly why I use the Epstein name. But also, have you heard of Monty Modlin? No, but for the point of view of anybody listening or watching, do identify people. Okay. So Monty Modlin was a BBC DJ. I mean, he was a DJ. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he's on the internet anyway. So Monty Modlin worked for the BBC. I think uh, he was you, Which uh, station did he operate on? I can't remember, but it is on the internet. It is documented. Um, it's documented on the internet. I don't I mean, remember. When you say he was a DJ, was he an announcer or did he play the records themselves? Or I mean, what sort of show did he do? I don't know. He was a comedian, I think. Oh, right. You know okay. what? I don't actually entirely know. I haven't paid much attention. As far as I'm concerned, he was quite common and he was he was just a cockney kind of lad. Um, I didn't I didn't really think too much of him, to be honest. Um, but he... He's documented as my great uncle. He's not my great uncle whatsoever, but he's on my family tree as my great uncle. So the woman that abused me as a child, he's meant to be her uncle. Now, I, I mean, when you say this is documented, where is it documented? If people want to look it up, where would they find it? Uh, I, oh, I don't. Okay, I think I think I sent you a document you might not have had a chance to receive or read. Yeah. At the well, end could you that... talk about that document and then maybe I could include some of the pic some of the pages on it. Uh, okay. On the edit. All right. Well, at the very end of the document, I and what's have the title of the document? Oh, I might need to send you a different one with a slightly different name because there was lots of different versions with a similar content. I mean, this particular document, I think, is is named. Um, I'm not sure if it was named. I was kidnapped. Well, and if I'm you sent it to me uh, on an email today, would you better look it up now? Um, I could if I moved. Yeah. Well, okay. To, to do that, we can cut it on the edit. But it's just important to get these details down. Okay. All right. Um, so that we got things right. Okay. Just for right. the sake I'm of a minute or two. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. But I do think I might need to send you a different edit of it because every time I edited it, I called it a different name. And I don't know that I've given you the final edit. Does that make okay. sense? Okay, well, it's sometimes it's better just to call it the same name and call it version 12345. Okay. Uh, what should we do for the purposes of this? Well, whatever we're going to compare it to, just name the name. So okay. I could put a page up on it or something. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so should I just go leave you here or take you with me? Just get the document and then... Okay, all right. So, oh, okay. So that one was called... Um, I was... Are you still recording?
Oh, okay. Should I carry on? Yes, sweetheart. Mm. Okay. So that one was entitled, I was kidnapped in 1981, I'm still a prisoner. So did you hold that up on the camera? Oh, I see. I need to know what it's called. Right, hold on. No, I can't. I don't know if I can actually, you know what? Can you see that? Yes, that's fine. Is that okay? Yeah. I see. Sorry, I didn't really understand what you meant. It's right. so that we, if you're going to have a different title for every edition of the document, it gets very difficult to, to look it up. Well, what I'll probably do is do a new document and I can name it that. And then first edition, second edition, whatever. Well, I was writing over 18 months as my amnesia was dissipating. So yeah, but if I you would... keep the title the same, yeah. then it's easier to tra track it. Mm hmm when I was first writing that, I didn't, I wasn't even aware that I was still kind of being controlled at all. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that it, that's, it's all kind of yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I think that's to do with the. Does that make state. it easy for easier for you? Uh, you mean as my memories came back? Yes. I mean, we haven't got onto that yet. We've just got you uh, going to Amsterdam and coming back from it. But we spent about an hour doing Amsterdam, and you know, we spent about half an hour doing it in the first edition, first part. So it was it was a very significant part of the last forty three years. It it was because it remind well actually. It, I mentioned earlier between nineteen ninety eight and two thousand sixteen, everything was normal. I didn't, I didn't see anything beyond kind of just being a mother. You know, I was just involved in that kind of thing. And when I went to Amsterdam, I was treated like I was in Sway during the years 1990, 1981 to 1994, and I was severely bullied. So when I went to Amsterdam, it was a bit of a, just started my, you know, it felt familiar. But I okay. have no memories of it ever happening. So, yeah, sorry. Where would you like me to go? Back to Monty Morgan? Well, that document you've showed, ah, showed us, did yeah. we want to, we don't want to sort of talk around that document you talked about? Well, at the very end of that document that I sent you, right, this particular yeah, The version, name of it is Kidnap 2, is that right? Uh, just, I was kidnapped in 1981 and I'm still a prisoner. Yeah, but what's the name of the document again? I was kidnapped in 1981 and I'm still a prisoner. That's the name I named it. Okay. Um, and at the very end of it, there's an email between, uh, I can't remember now, if she's a niece of Monty Modlin. She's, uh, it's either, she's either a niece of Monty Modlin or her husband was a nephew of Monty Modlin. I would have to double check. Okay. But she is, but that email is from a relative of Monty Modlin. And she's talking with the person that abused me as a child. And that is just, you know, it's not, I've not written it. And it's, it, yeah, it just links Monty Modlin to me, I suppose. Right. Yeah, that's the best way to explain it. So what's... Yeah. I mean, uh, so, okay, we're, so, we're so, at the end of hour two. Yeah, so sorry. F f where, where do you see this? Uh, it's okay. difficult to sort of tie things down because we're, yeah. we're still in the middle of Amsterdam and things. Where and after that a little bit, but. Um, uh, okay, so basically, um, play as far as I'm concerned. Playboy is part of the Epstein Foundation. Okay, that's your From, personal view. That's my personal view, yes. Okay, I, I'd so like explain to, all that. Well, it just means that obviously it, it, it's world known that the monarch's involved in child kidnap. Is it not, or am I, have I well, got that? Well, let's stick to your personal ah, experiences, so, but I don't want to be, um, you know, uh, you're talking about half truths and what somebody else said. I want okay. to stick to what so your from, experience is. From my experience, yeah, just everything is from your perspective. Playboy and the Monarch are involved in uh, international child sex slavery. 
And when a child is kidnapped, they don't escape. When a child is kidnapped, they, I mean, as far as I'm aware, I have got government chips in me somewhere. Um, and does that operate detectors at airports? Yes, yes. Um, now, from my experience, I would say that when you're kidnapped, you are kidnapped for research and you're kidnapped for sex slavery. Uh, I do believe they do all sorts of other things. Uh, but when you're kidnapped, you are brainwashed. As far as I'm aware, the M you, you do, well, I don't even, um, MK Ultra. You've, you've heard of, you vaguely understand. Do, do I've you? heard of MK Ultra, as a lot of people have. What, what, have you, what are you talking about? Well, as a child, I experienced all sorts of abuse. But um, a lot of it, um, excuse my stomach, um, there was hypnosis involved. There was electrocution involved. Um, from my memory, and of course, as a child, a lot of it didn't make sense until I'd become an adult. So I think that when I was a child, I was given all sorts of different drugs. I think I remember as a child the same feeling that I experienced with my ex, where my brain was working, but my body wouldn't move. You know, I remember one night Avril and Alex speaking to me and telling me to get up and go to bed. And I was sitting on this chair that I remember this really greeny, really yellowy chair that they had. And I was sitting there and they were looking at me and I was looking at them, but I couldn't move. I couldn't even open my mouth to speak. You know, my brain was looking at them and hearing them, but I couldn't move. Now, I don't know what drug they gave me, but whatever they gave me was the same as what Tim gave me in the last few years, because I had that same experience where I can, you know, I can look, I just can't move, which includes my vocal cords. I couldn't move my vocal cords. I just couldn't move any part of my body. Now, I don't know what drug does that to you. Yeah, but saying that, I did have a very similar experience with Vincent Brink in Amsterdam, so it could be ketamine. But whatever it was, I spent most of my childhood being drugged. Um, there was lots of repetition. There was lots of... Every single day, I was told how naughty I was. I was told how obnoxious I was. I was told how no one liked me and no one loved me. Um, I just had lots of negative reinforcement. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what my childhood was, lots of negative reinforcement. And I was always being told that I had to stay in my bedroom all the time because I was too naughty. You know, I never got supper. I don't know that I got breakfast. Um, I think I got... I don't think a lot of that's gone on. Uh, so, so what did you live on? I mean, how did you have food? I, I remember I was given this... I think Avril used to put some bread and some cheese in a, like, a toaster maker, and I would take to school this big, hard, cold lump of bread with cheese. Um, I know that that was for a while, and then I also remember eating um, potato, and I was allowed oats and water for a while. Um, I wasn't, yeah, there, there wasn't much else. There was the odd thing. There was phases where I got, I remember a phase of just being allowed pineapple, or just being allowed lettuce and raisins. Um, and when I was 14, I was given a litre of ice cream every day in the evening. And that's all I ate was just a litre of ice cream in the evening every day. I wasn't allowed anything in the daytime. Um, yeah, because they went from they, they went from making, you know, I was underweight for many years. And then suddenly at age 13, I went from being, I don't know, 
five and three quarters six stone in the March of the year. And by the October, I must have been about 10 stone. So I'd gone from being, uh, well, skinny. And it might, it might have been five and a half stone. But then by the end of the year, I was, you know, short. So, because I mean, I hadn't... Uh, what sort of height are you? I mean, what, what sort of, in relative terms, I mean, your, your body mass weight ratio thing? Uh, I'm about 152 centimetres. Um, I, I'm an average of seven stone now, but when I was 14 years old, I was probably about 145 centimeters and I literally went up to about 10 stone in, in a, in the six month period because they, they went from not feeding me anything to then they gave me like, literally they fed me ice cream. So did, uh, did, did you bulk up a lot or what? I just literally ballooned. I just literally ballooned. Um, it was very physically painful. Um, it was six months. They went from, yeah, not feeding me to feeding me badly and and all sorts of other weird things in between. Um, but what, but then was they the, put me what, what did they do? I mean, what was the purpose of that? Any idea? Well, I don't know because they told me I had anorexia. So I had to tell everyone I had anorexia while looking overweight. But I was a child, so I didn't understand what any of this meant. Um, I think it's just a form of abuse, really. Um, and who, yeah. who, I mean, where were you when all this was happening? Which, which part of the world? Uh, in Sway, in the New Forest. Um, I've, I can actually send photos of the house that I spent 13 years in. Um, but at the end of... At the end of the year, which would have been 1990, yeah, at the end of 1990, they put me into care and I spent six months in care and got fed properly in care. <laughs> so, you know, for the, for the first time in, you know, since 1981, I actually had proper meals every single day. So then I just started regulating and... Well, yeah, I just started regulating and be, being... So the care home seemed to treat you well and it was okay. It wasn't a, a lot of abuse or anything in there. No, it was very abusive. Uh, abusive. I got beaten up by the other residents because I didn't speak like they did and I didn't hold a cup of tea like they did. So I um, I got beaten up. Now, what, what do you mean? Did you Were you holding cups of tea with your finger right or what? Yeah, but I didn't realise. I must have just, you know, done it absent-minded. You know, I didn't know. I was a child. I didn't know. I didn't see. I didn't see the difference in people the way they saw the difference in me. I well, just, I mean, it, see, th th that gives some evidence that you were educated amongst people who hold cups of tea poshly. Well, before I was kidnapped, I mean, I you're not somebody who, hold, who holds a mug both sides and drinks with the handle up in the wrong way round. Sometimes. Well, yeah, sometimes I would do that myself. Shocking, terrible. I, I do all sorts of different things, but I did spend many years trying to fit in as well. I, I had to try and fit in because I got I got teased, for you know, for, because I spoke differently to everyone else. I did get teased a lot. Um, and I got physically beaten because they didn't like the way I spoke. So where was the care home that, would, that was different? Uh, in Southampton. Right. Um, and I, not only did I get beaten by the children, but when I didn't do what the children wanted me to do, I then got punished by the adults for not being naughty like the children wanted me to do. So it was... Now, when it was, you say being naughty, without being, what sort of things are they referring to? That they... Well, there was one girl that wanted me to run away and go see her boyfriend. Now I agreed with her that I would that I would we were meant to be we we were meant to be going swimming and I was really looking forward to going swimming. But she wanted to go and see her boyfriend who was in a different care home. So I reluctantly agreed to do that, but I wanted to go back to the to the care home on so time. You like, were being sent to another care home to talk to her boyfriend. Well she wanted me to go with her to this care home. Right. And I didn't want to, but I reluctantly agreed. 
But then I wanted to go back to the care home that we were meant to go back to because I wanted to go back. I mean, I didn't enjoy... I mean, what sort of distances are we talking about here? I don't remember. It's a blur. We, I know we went on a train. Or, we, or actually, I don't know that. We went, we went to the train station because she actually beat me up on the train station. She was actually kicking me on the ground. I had to be rescued by the, um, by the Southampton train guards because I was just a child that was being kicked because she was taking this gas and the gas was making her act you what know, sort crazy. of gas? I mean, where did she get this gas? She got she got this from a from a shop. I, I think she used the money that the care home had given us to go swimming. Well, what sort of gas is available in, in a shop that makes you uh, go violent and kick people? Uh, lighter fluid. What? I don't know. Lighter fluid. I haven't heard of that. No, <laughs> it's the only time I've ever heard of it as well. Um, but what sort they, of gas is that that's available for for sale? I don't know. I, d I don't know. I, I didn't want to try it. I mean, I'm sure I might have done because I was forced to, but I don't remember very much. I don't know. They put the, the, the end of it in their teeth, but I can't remember how they got it out. I don't, I don't remember exactly. It looked funny. I don't know if it was anything like helium gas. I'm not entirely sure. Um... I mean but balloon anyway. gas. You talking about balloon gas? No, it was it was lighter fluid. I don't like, know that. I, I, anyway, she got high. She got angry. She got violent. I refused to go on the train with her to go. She wanted to get on this train and not go back to the care home. I said no. I'm not going to do that. I, you know, I stood my ground and I said, you know, I've not gone swimming and I really wanted to go swimming, but I said, you know, I want to go back to the care home now, like we're meant to. Yeah. So she just started kicking me and, be, you know, she was probably beating me up. Um, so I probably got, I vaguely remember that I got taken back to the care home. Actually, I don't remember if the guards took me back or if someone came from the care home to the train station to pick me up. I don't remember which way, but I got Well, if she was the kicking you on the, pave, on the, on the station floor, uh, uh, I mean... A, a, a railway man came and saved me. So I, you know, I was taken to safety by this railway person, but I don't remember how I got back to the care home. I don't well, remember. I they... imagine that the authorities would have put you on the right train to the right place. Well, it was in Southampton. I don't think there was a train to, I, we didn't need to be at the train station. We were meant to be walking to where we were going. Okay. So, but anyway, I got back to the care home and then I was punished I, then I was punished, um, but she wasn't punished, and she disappeared. I don't know when they got her back, but she wasn't punished, and I was punished. So that was the kind of experience I had. I was literally punished by both sides. So I, I learned. I learned at a very early age to just literally just say nothing. I, I mean, you know, I was in a position where I was going to be abused by everyone, no matter what, because of the system that i was in right. i mean for my for my experience everyone knew that i'd been kidnapped because the the gps knew because they could see the bio, bio, biology wasn't the same um the schools could see because the intelligence wasn't the same and just it was obvious i think i was being abused because i wasn't allowed to wash i mean i was absolutely filthy you know, I was made to sleep in bedding that hadn't been, you know, that got washed maybe once every year or three. Literally. You know, I actually smelt so bad. But no one ever did anything about it. So, um, I, from my experience, you know, the schools were aware, the, the surgery was aware, uh, the police were definitely aware, because I, I did go to the local police and, and let them know that I had been kidnapped. And I was just, he was just one of the men that came to my room at night after that. So, But what know, about um, the people who, I mean, what sort of things were happening to you then? I mean, were you being picked up and taken places or what? By men or what? No. I mean, no, the, the, I, the care home thing, did that? Oh, they're definitely, I do remember 
I, I do remember a couple of, I remember one occasion where there were some men at the, the front door of the care home. And I think they were smoking marijuana, but I didn't, I, di- I didn't, I wasn't introduced to marijuana until I was 16. So I, I didn't know it was marijuana at the time. Um, I know there was another occasion that me and this same girl, I'm assuming it was before the event of the the train station, I do remember in a situation where we're in the back of a van with two adult men, but I don't remember much about it. Um, from from the ages of five until twelve, I was allowed to go to school, but I wasn't allowed to do anything else. So I went to school, and then I was in my room. I wasn't allowed to watch television. Um, it was just school and bedroom. And I was told that I couldn't watch television because I'd been naughty. And every single day I was told I'd been naughty, so I had to go straight to my room. Um, but in school, I was, you know, I was the cleverest in, you know, in my class. So I, I was doing, you know, I was doing great in school, but um, yeah, at home it was be- straight to bedroom. And you know, no, and nothing in my bedroom either. I wasn't allowed anything. I mean, obviously, you you ended up being an accountant. I mean, you can't be that unless you've done some heavy exams. Uh, well, I did. I did. I I was partway through level four of the AAT, um, which I did in two thousand and thirteen, fourteen, and partly way through. Yeah, I start actually. I, I, I did two and a half years at, at, at college to do some accountancy training, but I had to give up before I finished because of lots of different things. Well, I mean, you're at a young young, young teenage era when you're being in, in a care home. So what happened after that to sort of get you to actually somehow qualify to be a, some kind of an accountant? Um, well, while I was a teenager, I barely went to school. Um I learn, I learn well, um, but I missed a lot of school. I I went from being the cleverest in, you know, from always being the clever person, the person that never got anything wrong. And it was about the time I went into care, I think that Avril started giving me an antipsychotic. Because when I got back from the care home, when I was 14 and a half, yeah, I was 14 and a half when I was let out of the care home. And I just missed six months of school um, entirely. I didn't go to school for six months. Um, but when I uh, but when I went back to school, I think it's. It, so, it I mean, where were you it. released to, and how did you get back to school? Uh, mean, and how can you be away from school for six months or whatever? So when I was in the care home, I wasn't allowed to go to school because it was not just at any old care home. It was a detention center for naughty children. Right, okay. And bearing in mind, I promise you, I wasn't naughty. I mean, I really wasn't naughty. But um, but I think people were... St- uh, the person that's documented as my sister, Aviva Kessel, um, she had just started the same secondary school as me. And people were starting to ask questions because she... She is literally the most common person I've ever met on this planet, literally. Well, you're so smiling no one, a lot, thinking of her. Well, no one believed we were related. Why? Is, are you stri- strikingly different or what? Uh, well, we speak very differently for a start. I mean, we speak incredibly differently. I was in all the top sets at school. I mean, I, you know, I was in... You had kind of like six sets... And, you know, I was always in the top set and she was always in the bottom set. Um, She couldn't, she couldn't, I already knew how to swim before I was kidnapped. She doesn't know how to swim as an adult, as far as I'm aware. Right. Um, I was really, really brainy. She, she was, she couldn't do anything. So it was really obvious to people that we weren't related. As a child, I used to hear the joke about the postman or the milkman. 
but I didn't understand what that meant. So, so no one believed that we were related. And she, other than her beating me up quite a lot, we didn't spend any time together. Um, but why did you smile when you talked, when you made reference to her? Because people never believed that we were related. Because if you were going to put any two people together and say they're siblings, you couldn't have chosen two more different people. So I was mean, I mean were you adopted or for, for a war she adopted? Um, or different fathers or different mothers? I mean, what? Uh, we both have different different mothers and different fathers. I I was kidnapped when she, when I was five. I don't think she was kidnapped until she was about three. So she was introduced to me when she was about three years old. I don't believe she's not related to she's not related to the people she's not related to the people that are documented as her parents and I'm not related to them. I, I think I think she was kidnapped as well. Right. Okay, so where do you want to go with this in the last ten minutes? It's an hour and twenty minutes now. Okay. Well, we'll probably a little bit will be cut out of that. Okay. Well, I, as I said, from my experience, the government kidnaps children for research and for sex slavery. What do and, you mean by research? Well, with the mind control, you have to spend, well, and they've been researching it for hundreds of years. So they need bodies in order to actually experiment on all from my experience all prostitutes are under mk ultra there are, there is not a single prostitute on this planet that chooses to be a prostitute in my opinion from my experience i could be wrong but that's what i believe Okay, so okay, that's that's solid ground. So can we continue on that theme, solid ground? Well, it's noted that Epstein and researchers and scientists were all interlinked. And obviously I had the experience in Amsterdam with Vincent Brink. And I know that he tried to make me do things and I know what it's like to kind of be mindfully told to do it, but not, but, you know. In what way? Well, uh, you know, like sexual acts, they can tell you to do, I'm assuming, they, they program it into the computer. So you kind of get this awareness that you're meant to be doing it, but you don't want to do it. Now, what do you mean in the computer? How does that influence your mind? I don't know. I, I don't know exactly. But have you I heard know. of have you heard of V2K? Yes. But it's it's What do you know about V2K? Uh I know Ah, okay. Uh I will send you information. I don't know if I've sent you information all, already. Forge Electronics. Could you write that name down? Forge Electronics. Forge, um, as in a forge. Yeah, yeah. So, Forge Electronics. Um, I'm hoping you have you know who Michael Bond is. Do are you familiar with Michael Bond and his research at Cambridge University? No, explain that. Uh, well, Michael Bond is Alan Bond's son. Uh, Alan Bond is, is the first paedophile I remember coming to my room at night. And he and his wife are very, very close friends with the, the, the couple that abused me as a child. And they abused a beaver too. Uh, so Alan Bond, he, his lifetime research, um, his website, Forge Electronics, and his research, he spent his lifetime more of the hardware. So, you know, he's been designing and manufacturing, I'm sorry, drones 
And if you look at his website, it talks about how you can make any surface into a speaker. Now, I don't know how they do this, but I know it's possible. I mean, I understand more about how you can put sounds into, uh, you know, like waves of water or in the wind, or you can, you can, you can kind of connect to the, the birds tweeting. You can, you, you can somehow send the electromagnetic pulses to connect to, you know, waves and water and, and animal noises. Does that make sense? Yeah, Which so my, are you t yeah. Okay. There's, I can so, see there's connections there somehow. Yeah, I, I probably need to... My explanation's not very good. I purposely kind of stayed away from all that kind of technical stuff because it was easier for me to be pleading ignorant to everything that was going on because it just meant my life was easier if they thought I didn't know anything. Well, you obviously do know something, so that's the purposes uh, of this... <laughs> well, so so Alan Bond of Forge Electronics, his job has been to implement V2K. Uh, and the way I see it is, um, well, so they are using a computer to send the electromagnetic fields and waves and pulses into different kind of places. But I think they can connect to the um, the cock, is it cochlea? Or I, again, I'm not even sure. Yeah, the the Something behind the back of the ear. Yeah, they, they use, but they use, as far as I'm aware, don't they use their computers to the for the commands of the electromagnetic waves? It's got to, there's got to be lots of noughts and ones and that connects to the well it just it's to do with the micro the magnet the electronic the electronic magnetic waves or the mag the electrical magnetic i'm going to have to revise the words because i don't remember some of the words the electromagnetic fields does that sound better okay well you have electric fields and you have magnetic fields do you have those as well separate yeah, and I think they try and connect them. Or they do them separately. So you're I don't feeling know. the back of your neck. Have you got a problem oh, there? Oh, so, sorry, I've got lots of pain there. Okay. Is that increasing based on the topic of conversation we're having? And I think I was leant forward, so I wasn't very comfortable. I think it was because I was, I think, a, I think a multitude, but I okay. was leant forward. So, yeah, if I just sit back a bit, I, yes, I do get tense. Um... So, yeah. Okay, I oh, think we'd like to. I like to sort of round it up. This, yes. this part two. It's been a bit meandering, but the, the well, what do you want to sort of leave as a message in this part two? Well, from my experience, all government organisations are involved in in child sex trafficking. All, uh, all is a small word with a big meaning. From my experience, I haven't come across a single government agency that hasn't shown me that they've got someone working for them that's involved. Okay. I think, I think with, with the technology today, and obviously Freemasons, I mean, because we're talking, uh, I mean, as far as I understand it, the monarch is the Illuminati. I don't know if you have that same understanding. It's what you understand and your experience that I want to okay. uh, talk about. So from my experience and my understanding, the monarch and the Vatican are the Illuminati. Um, people like Malcolm Kessel and Monty Modlin are Freemasons that work underneath the Illuminati. Now, from, from my experience, Playboy is very, very, very much involved in, in child sex trafficking. I, I mean, they, you know, that, that's And that, how that's I, your opinion. We can't, you can't prove that. You don't have any evidence, do you? Uh, well, Malcolm Kessel 
was the manager at the Clermont Club. And if you were to give us both a DNA test, you would see that I'm not related to him. So the evidence is my physical body, my physical DNA. You know, if anyone wanted to actually, uh, um, what's the word? If anyone wanted to, uh, I can't think of the right word, it's just gone from my head. But if anyone's, my DNA is evidence that I'm not related to Malcolm Kessel. And the point and about that is? Say again? The point oh, about Mel that is? My, and Malcolm Kessel was the pl the, play the playboy manager of the Clermont Club in Mayfair. So what you're saying is that your DNA and his DNA are not connected? Yes. And so what is the point on that exactly? So if I was taken to the Playboy Club as a five-year-old child, I wasn't taken there as his niece. I, I was taken there as my journey through from leaving my parents to meeting his brother. Right. So what's the connection there? What's the join some dots here? Uh, well, so Malcolm, okay, so Lord Lucan disappeared through the Clermont Club. Where Malcolm Kessel, my apparent uncle, um, where he worked, that was where the Lords and the Dukes went to discuss their backhanded um, That's where, I mean, it's documented on the internet, and I believe it from my experience. That's where... No, but a lot of things are on the internet. Where do you okay. see this actually giving a connection? Because you're making accusations which are not, you know... Not, from from uh, my understanding... The okay, Clermont your understanding, Club, okay. From the, from the Clermont, the Clermont Club is where illegal and immoral... Um, meetings were held about what they were planning to do. You know, from, from my understanding, my kidnap was pre-planned at the Clermont Club. That's my understanding. Um, now, Olivia Kessel, who was Malcolm's daughter, she is now married to a Johnny Pitts. And they got married at the the castle in Cornwall that belonged to Duke Pitts. So I don't know if that Did is. Do you have a name a for the castle? Baruka Barukanov. I can send you the name. Yeah. I haven't when I've read it, I haven't actually like spelt it phonetically and sounded it out, so I can't remember it. But Barocca, Barocca or something. Well, I will where is it close to? Where's the nearest remember. town? I can't remember. I, okay. I only, the is only reason north, I know. North Cornwall or South Cornwall? I don't know. I want, I don't know. I, 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 when we finish this, I will send you a link straight away before I forget. Okay. But yeah. But anyway. I haven't seen Olivia Kessel since 1998. I've only ever met her about three times. She's documented as my cousin. Um, she's not my cousin. She went to the most elite school in Epsom. Okay, uh, so she went to a posh school. Yes. Um, I grew up in a council estate after I was kidnapped. Before I was kidnapped, I had ballet lessons and, I, and piano, and I and knew how to swim. Right. So I went, my lifestyle changed so dramatically, you, you know, plus when I was with my parents, my parents were loving and, and adoring, you know, we had a normal, happy relationship. And I went through, I went through, I went from a, a household of loving clean people to a pit of paedophiles you know the, the contrast couldn't be more and, i mean you, there's no other evidence of that your twin the, that i have a twin yeah, a twin you mentioned something about the twin uh i gave birth to twins in you gave birth to twins yeah 
um, but I only got to keep one. And so there's nobody else, a, a twin in your circle? I don't, I, I don't remember enough about, my memories keep coming back to me. When I wrote the story that I sent to you, I didn't even remember ballet lessons. I didn't remember piano. I've had a, I've had a memory of my mother. I've had several memories that have never left me. And for all the years that I remembered them, I just assumed that Avril and Alex used to be nice people, but then something bad happened to them and they became bad people. Yeah. Because with mind control and with all the kind of weird stuff that goes with it, you kind of compartmentalize and yes. you don't put things together. So I knew that my parents loved me. I just thought when, when I believed for many years that Avril and Alex were my biological parents, I just thought they, they, I didn't think they stopped loving me. I just thought something bad happened to them and they became bad. I didn't, I didn't kind of, I didn't put things together and process the fact that they weren't the same people. You know, I knew that I had an amazing beginning in life. I just didn't process how it changed so dramatically, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, but my point was, Olivia Kessel, who's Malcolm's daughter, the Clermont Club person, she went to Epsom Elite School um, and married possibly a Duke. I don't know if he's... I don't know. Um but I got kidnapped and I grew up in a council estate and I didn't go anywhere other than my bedroom in school. But I was very fortunate that I'd already learned to swim because as I said, the person on my birth certificate is my sister. She never got to learn to swim. That's your official sister, not the actual. Yes. No, she's officially my, as far as the corrupt government child sex trafficking trade goes, she is my official sister. And because it's the government that kind of own us both, they're not going to ever admit that they're, they're trafficking children. So so they would just put me in a mental so, hospital. Uh, ending part two, is there anything you'd like to sort of explain what you're going to do in a part three, if you want to do a part three? Um, well... I don't know. Would you like to lead and, 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 and suggest? Yeah, we could do a, a part three. Do you want to, should, should I email you some bits and some email you some information and you decide how to direct it? Yes. Because obviously, as I said in the email, my life covers every different aspect of government corruption. So do you think it's a wise thing to highlight that, bearing in mind of what we've now got in the in October, in September 2024 in this country? Why are you coming out now? Oh, just because I didn't know until now. I had complete amnesia. It wasn't until my neighbours broke in in the middle of the night in 2020 and I didn't understand why. But now you so have a clearer understanding. And now I know exactly why. Yes, because I also haven't told you that when my memories started coming out and I started posting on Facebook about my memories, I had the police at my door half a dozen times last year telling me to stop naming the paedophiles because paedophiles have very, very close police protection. Right. So I'm also happy... I'm meant to be moving house in, well... Well, but we'll not say anything about yeah. that because it won't be relevant by the time this gets done. So because of that, I am happy to leave things and not bring more attention to it and just kind of just be grateful that I'm alive and accept that the government are going to be that way until someone does something about it. I am, you know... You know I don't want any more threats from the police telling me that I'm going to go to prison because, you know, I'm, I'm what sharing What threats have you have from the police that you're going to... 
well i've had i've had threats that i need to shut my mouth or they will find a way to lock me up and how long ago was that that they said that oh the last threat i had from them was 16 weeks ago right well we'll um we'll take that on board and, but, and we'll, we'll 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 do a part three and and see how far it goes all right well let's let's have some emails and and maybe i give you some more information yeah and then you can maybe lead and maybe we could be a little bit more focused yeah because we're, we've been bouncing around a lot but this is this is sort of a rush job this afternoon to um to just get something on 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 uh, on record and we'll take it from there okay all right but just to clarify then you said why now i broke up with my ex in 2019 and then all of a sudden all these things started happening to me and i didn't understand why because from 1998 everything had been so normal and so kind of normal that i wasn't aware of anything before 1998 so when thing when the neighbors started kind of bullying me i didn't understand why and then that's why and that's when the memories all started coming flooding out and also i've had lots of burglaries and things and that's all it's all kind of been why is this happening to me so so that's it's it's just been it, you know, it's been what's been happening to me in the last four or five years that have made all these memories kind of come to the surface. Okay. Plus, I, plus I discovered I was targeted last year. You know, I discovered that there's lots of targeted people. So it's just all kind of been lots of information that I've had to deal with and grieve through it. Um, and, and, and I've had to, you know, get fit and healthy in order to be able to cope with what's happening as well. Okay, so we're not calling you a TI, um, we're calling you a uh, trafficked survivor. I would, yeah, I am, a, I am a survivor of, I would say, government trafficking. Because at the end of the day, if it wasn't the government doing it, the government would have stopped it. You know, regardless of my experience in the individual government departments, you know, even if I didn't know that these government departments were involved, the government have the technology now to stop all crime. You know, there is technology out here that there should be nobody being murdered, nobody should be Well, I, th I think when you've got a tool like that in the wrong hands for, for, sake of a, 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 for the sake of argument, that can stop people like yourself blowing whistles they've been trying to obviously keep me quiet yeah well one of the best ways in, of, in um, ways. of uh, there's a y basic technique know. if you keep quiet they I, can do you in I, then we're now losing the signal somebody's from interfering okay it's breaking up a bit yeah right yeah i heard that too well until next time okay all right well thank you very much for your time and we'll see what we can do with this in the next uh, couple of days i've got a couple of things uh editing and i've got uh, a shoot tomorrow okay okay and I, i'm going to look for information and i'll email you some more things and i'll email you the link to the the castle yeah. okay. okay something all that right. i can use visually on screen if necessary yeah Okay, I can do that. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll we'll switch to the old cameras. That's it. Isn't this exciting? When we when we do this, it's very exciting. Stop them uh, one by one. So exciting! This.